Number five, it's the Aztecs. Did you know that Aztec priests used to sacrifice about 50,000 victims a year in lots of gruesome ways? <laughs> What's not to like? Take it away, boys. We're Aztec priests, so mind your head. Our prisoners always wind up dead. Our favorite color is blood red. We're not nice. At an Aztec temple's opening day, we priests would please our gods this way. Hordes of enemies we'd slay, mass sacrifice. To win our war, make crops grow more, to cure our kids when ill. The song to shine, this song to rhyme, more victims we must kill. Survive, you won't survive. Ain't staying alive, ain't staying alive. Yeah. With sacrifice, we priests appease our gods, each powerful big cheese. Let's hear it for your favorites, please. Oh, we're doing it for Tony. The Aztec goddess at the earth's heart. We're doing it for Chantico. Goddess who makes volcanoes stop. We're doing it for Ainsley. The goddess of stone knives. We're doing it. Aztecs, we advise ya. Or you'll end up as fertilizer. Yeah. Our year starts in November when every priestly member is asked if they'll remember our Aztec dead. We do this if you haven't guessed by getting something off your chest. Your heart would probably be best, or else your head. And then on our year planners, it's the raising of the banners. It's only polite manners to kill more guys. December and January, dismembering methods fairy. All you need to know is that we pile them high. May and June, it's summertime, the killing is easy. It's only halfway through the year, bet you're feeling queasy. In autumn time, we sweep our homes and kill some more, but then by late October, the killing's over, then it starts up again. Survive, you won't survive. Ain't staying alive, ain't staying alive. Want to live until you're old. Avoid us priests, you've been told. You're watching my scary special. <laughs> Sorry, doorbell scared me. <laughs> Thought I saw a ghost then. Just a sec. Yes. Delivery for Mr. D.F. Sign here, mate. Oh, OK. Hmm. I wonder what it is. It's a scythe, mate. Oh, thanks a lot. Ruin the surprise, why don't you? Honestly, there's no magic anymore, is there? No mystique. <laughs> anyway, at number four on my scary list, it's Georgian art. Not very frightening sounding, I know. But then, I'm not talking about pretty pictures of flowers. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm. Bonjour! <laughs> I am Madame Tussaud. You have heard of me, no? <laughs> bon. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make wax models, like the ones I made of the aristocrats during the French Revolution, using <laughs> their actual decapitated heads. <laughs> Don't worry, this is just one of my wax models, I think. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. I am so good. So, first, we need a French aristocrat. Bonjour, le vicomte de Chanfleur at your service, Madame Tussaud. No, 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 your body is still attached, I just need your head. No way, I'm still using it. Oh, poof. Good job, I picked one up earlier from the Madeleine Cemetery à Paris. This is where they chuck the bodies of hundreds of aristocrats who have had the chop from the guillotine. Mon Dieu. You mean this is not one of your wax replicas? It's so good, it could be, but no. No, no, this is a real one. <laughs> oh, oh, that's horrible. If you rifle through the cemetery, you will see the corpses of some super posh nobles. And if you're very lucky, you may see some actual royals. Oh. Ah. Now, to make the mold, we pour plaster of Paris over the face, like this. To make a mold, like this one. Then we pour wax into the mold and leave it to dry. And then 
we get something like this. So, for the finishing touch, I like to add uh, real hair, some glass eyes like this. Boop. Boop. And for the pièce de résistance, some real human teeth. Realistic, no? <laughs> I'm just too good. Too good. Well, till next week, my little chums. See you then. Bye-bye. Excuse me, have you finished with your idea? <laughs> Nowadays, there's a whole Madame Tussauds waxwork museum in London with hundreds of lookalikes made using the heads of famous dead people. What's that, Mother? Well, they don't use dead people anymore. That's rubbish. I'm tearing up my annual subscription. Anyway, next at number three, it's pirates. I mean, what's scarier than a pirate? A pirate doctor, that's what. But I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. I'll just see if there's a doctor around. Ah! Morning, nurse! Morning, and you are? One eyed Ned, pirate extraordinaire! I got my chest here full of the finest pirate medicines. Ah, seawater. Hemlock! That's poisonous, isn't it? Only if I don't read the instructions, which I probably won't, because they're all in Latin and I can't read anyway. <laughs> right, let's have a look at Jimmy Young Swappy. Touch a scurvy, eh? Ah, well, there's not much a bit of bloodletting won't cure. Removes all the toxins, so it does. I haven't got scurvy, I just got caught on my leg. Ah, why didn't you say so? Oh, we'll have it off in no time. Off? Yeah, you don't want a rotten leg aboard a ship, do you? But it's only a little cut. Well, better safe than sorry. Trust me, I'm a carpenter. A carpenter? I thought you said you were a doctor. We had a doctor, but he died. He mostly just sort off limbs anyway. <laughs> and I'm the ship's carpenter, so I know me ways about a snore. <sighs> Say ah! 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 You're a chatty one, ain't you? Isn't there anything you can give him to ease the pain? Any anaesthetic? Oh, I've never heard of him. Oh, rum, maybe? Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, laddie. Better see if he survives first. <laughs> no good wasting good rum on the deck. <laughs> Nurse! The leg. Almost finished. All we gotta do now is seal the wound. With stitches and a clean dressing? No! With a load of hot tar. Ah! <laughs> oh, good thinking, nurse. Ah. <laughs> Here's your new leg. And next at number two, it's executions. Ooh, I love a good execution, and so did the Georgians. Hello and welcome to the news at when. When, 1724, when a third of London's population turned out to see Britain's most famous criminal. To find out more, let's go over live to Jessica Harvey Smythe, who's soaking up the atmosphere. As you can see, thousands of people have turned up just to catch a glimpse of their hero, Jack Shepard, perhaps one of London's most glamorous criminals. He's escaped from prison not once, not twice, but four times, and these people clearly love him for it. Jack Shepard is well lush. Yeah, he's, like, such a rebel and he's so daring. So how long have you been a fan? Uh, like, since his first escape, he was being held in St Giles' roundhouse and he broke out through the roof. Yeah, and um, he, he lowered himself to the ground using bed sheets tied together. It was well wicked. Yeah, and I really liked it when he escaped from Newgate Prison dressed in ladies' clothes. Yeah, that was so awesome. Let's try to get an interview with the man himself. Jack, 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 HHTV News. Um, can we have a few words? Of course you can. Nice to meet you. Oh, well, um, 300,000 Georgians have turned up just to catch a glimpse of you, Jack. That's one quarter of London's population. Um, are you nervous? A few butterflies. It's not every day you're executed. Well, when you say executed, I'm sure you're planning to make one of your trademark daring escapes. Oh, you know me so well. I do have a trick up my sleeve, actually. It's a pen knife. Brilliant. And I'm going to use it. I'll have that. This way, Sonny. I'll think of something. 
Jack Shepard there. Can't wait to see how he's going to get out of this one. And the crowd are going to go absolutely wild. And Jack is getting up on the scaffold now and he's putting his head in the noose. I'm sure he's about to make his move any time now. And the hangman is about to open the trap door. He should be escaping any second. Still, always nice to see a good public execution. Great day out for all the family. So, who's at number one? The tension is killing me. Not really, I'm already dead. <laughs> keep up, keep up. Drum roll, please, mother. Whatever. So, at number one, it's me, of course. <laughs> I couldn't decide between all the awful things that were left, so I decided to include all of them in a song. <laughs> My singing is awful, too. Fairy cakes, baby ducks, warm winter mittens Snowflakes on puppies and cute cuddly kittens One of these might be your favourite thing But not me, it's scary, that makes me go zing! <laughs> Smallpox and scurvy and fatal diseases Lesions and lurgy, I like to hear wheezes Of bogeys and poo, I just can't get enough Yes, that's just a bit of my favourite stuff Scary, hairy Things that go bump in the night Slimy, grimy I love all that stuff that gives you a fright Ooh. Emperor Vitellius being dumped in room sewers Brandings with irons for Tudor wrongdoers Aztecs with thousands of skulls on a rack Amateur executions! Hack, 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 hack! Mm. Pharaohs all buried with their bottom wiper Roman deodorant made from a viper Buck and hair stealing from Edinburgh's graves Yes, these are a few of my personal faves For pustules or boils. Mm. Spooky, kooky. Some of my best friends look like gargoyles. William the Conqueror's exploding body, a gutsy performance, a funeral most oddy. Ivan the Terrible stealing a bishop's dogs, sewed him in bearskins and let out the dogs. Ooh, ooh. When I'm feeling just a bit miss standing at death's door, I simply remember what makes people bath and then I just laugh. Loads more! <laughs> well, that's all we've got time for. So it's bye bye from me and bye bye from Mother. Bye bye! Tall Town Coaches X! We gave you all the beers and fans. If you enjoyed that, why not come and play? Go to the CBBC website and click on Horrible Histories. See you there. The past is no longer a mystery. Hope you enjoyed Horrible Histories.